Now, Gulati, um, he had his little... Ah, half- there's the... Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, he had his halftime spiel, and he seemed to not really back down. He backed Blazer the, the whole way, it seemed like. I mean, are you impressed at all by this, uh, our own show of balls here? Or? Well, the thing that, the, the, uh, Sunil is a, an intriguing guy, you know, and I'm not sure that I'm crazy about Sunil, i got to tell you. And I'm, I've never been crazy about the way he runs the, the USSF. But, and I didn't understand in the halftime interview, I didn't understand what he meant when they said, uh, or when he said, explain to them that, well, he had, he had voted for Sepp Blatter because he decided to take the high road. And he said it twice. Yeah. So he clearly had meant to say it. He wanted to make that point. I don't see why voting for Sepp Blatter, you know, is uh, is, is anything like taking the high road. But mm. there must be something there. But mm. be that as it may, Sepp, uh, Chuck Blazer and and Sunil Gulati are the best of friends. They came up together in the Eastern States uh, Soccer Association. They were both coaches for a little while. Um, then Chuck got out of coaching and got into administrating, and and uh, uh, Sunil was a state coach. Um, but they knew each other back when they were, you know, basically Chuck and Sunil, a couple of dads coaching soccer. Mm. That's really exactly what Amazing. it was. Amazing. And 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 you know, lo and behold, they went on. Chuck is now head of Concacaf, and Sunil is now head of USSF. Um, but that's how tight they are. That's how far back they go. Yeah. So. I really, you know, that's the that's the the, the wild card in all this. Mm. Clearly, the two of them are, are communicating. Clearly, the two of them are coordinating what they do, and 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 they knew that they had uh, uh, the majority of the executive committee. I don't know how they knew it. Maybe they asked. Maybe they, I don't know. I don't know how you'd ask in advance. Mm-hmm. They knew going into this that they had the executive committee on their on their side, and if they could take. Warner out of the equation um, that they that they could they could take control of Concacaf and it's exactly what they've done and they control Concacaf now for the first time ever yeah. the United States Mexico Canada and the Central American states control Concacaf mm-hmm. and it's driving the CFU nuts the Caribbean <laughs> countries are down there going <laughs> ballistic because yeah. uh, the big bad North North Norte Americanos. Mm. Um, are not calling the shots, and we are calling the shots, and Sunil Gulati has a lot to do with it. Yeah. But we'll never, it's between him and Chuck, and it's all behind closed doors, and we'll never, you know, it's like those four guys who, who you know, in the hotel room in Zurich. Mm. Um, uh, 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 Campione from Mexico, and Sunil Gulati from the United States, and Howitt from uh, 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 Honduras, mm. um, sat in Chuck Blazer's hotel room in Zurich and made a conscious decision to take over CONCACAF. Yeah. And it's, it's astonishing. It's a great time. Uh, uh, it's a great time to be a soccer fan in America. Number one, what does this mean for us at this point, if anything, for World Cup uh, 2022, which obviously we lost uh, to, to Ben Haman and, and, and Cutter as um, our, our former president says. And and what do you think needs to be fixed, changed, uh, in you know, in the grand scheme of things, to stop this crap from happening in the future? Well, I, you, the first part of your question, Sepp Blatter has repeatedly said that 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 Qatar, Qatar. I'm not even sure how you really do pronounce it. It's probably probably a third pronunciation we don't even know, but. Um, <laughs> Whoever the hell those guys are, and the, the sitting around and were sitting around in a tent one day, and oil started popping up through the ground, and next thing you know, they were whoever these people are, um, uh, that, that that's a closed subject. Yeah. Um, and unless and until somebody can come up with proof positive, um, see what the English have, and their their whistleblower has really has, has jumped overboard. But um, what England has is. What Qatar offer? What what you know? These these people asked for for bribes. What asked them? That does not just because Julio Grandona, who is a filthy pig as far as I'm concerned, um, uh, the head of the Argentine uh, Federation, um, uh, just because he asked them for money, doesn't mean that Qatar paid him money. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a clo- there's a link there. 
that they can't make. Yeah. They can claim that these guys, you know, ask them for money. Maybe they, if they have tape, if they have film, if they have a signed thing that says, please, you know, give us X money and we'll vote for you, it still doesn't prove that Qatar paid them anything. Right. And that's that's the missing link, and, and, and it doesn't look like we're going to be able to prove that. Yeah. It really doesn't, unless somebody from Qatar comes forward with a receipt or, you know, a, a deposit slip, or it, was just, it doesn't seem likely. Yeah, sadly. I really don't think there's anything we can do. Right. Um, but in any case, I want to I want to ask you, I want to skip that. I want to ask you, answer your last question. Good, yeah. Um, people talk now about, and it was, people said it during the election, Bin Hammam said it, um, our good friend Grant Wall, God bless his soul, may you know, um, um, live a thousand years, um, said that what FIFA needs is transparency, and and transparency has become kind of a buzzword for you know government. We use it in this country. Well, our government needs more transparency, and it does. It, it truly does. In FIFA, it's not the point. What FIFA lacks is accountability. Mm -hmm. Go to uh, uh, YouTube. When you get a chance, and look at the just even look at the first fifteen minutes of of the BBC Panorama program mm -hmm. that Andrew Jennings did just before the vote that everybody had such a fit over, mm -hmm. and you look at those guys. You look at Richard Teixeira. You look at at Grandona. You look at at, at Leos of, of of Paraguay. These these are enormously wealthy, eighty year old men who slide around Zurich in the backseat of $250,000 Mercedes limousines, mm. and they don't care that everybody knows that they're stealing money. Yeah. It doesn't matter because they're not touchable. They can't be stopped. They can't be touched. They can do whatever they want. Yeah. You, We have no control. Public opinion has no control. They're not accountable. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's what we have to figure out how to do. I mean, because um, they're they're almost being transparent about the fact that there is no accountability. I mean, really, that's right? exactly right. Everybody knows that they still, they don't even care that you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <everybody laughs> knows, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, um, uh, uh, that's not a transparency issue. That's a you can't touch them issue. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's interesting. The Olympics. One of the things that the Olympics did when they went through this very same kind of a thing, and uh, people try to draw that parallel. And there's some parallels, but there's some big differences. Um, what the Olympics try has tried to do, just more or less success. They've tried to take politics out of it as much as they can and turn it over to technicians. Let me give you an example. When the World Cup bids went in. Uh, uh, to Zurich. Uh, you, all the countries had to submit a bid book. And then uh, Zurich had, FIFA had engineers, and they had media people, and they had transportation experts, and they had uh, they have an army of people employed there. And they they went, all went to all the different sites, they talked to the people, they looked at all the venues, they, they evaluated all of the, the facilities and the transportation and everything, and they sent in scores. And as we all know, uh, Qatar had the lowest score, and the U.S. had the highest score. Yep. I thought I thought Australia actually had the highest score, and we were just not far behind. Is it true? I didn't. I, I, I maybe you're right. Rega regardless, U.S. and Australia had the two strongest bids. I remember okay. that. All right. um, at which point, it all went out the window, and it was decided based on politics. Mm -hmm. What I what 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 FIFA needs is. Some, I mean, certainly you have to have some oversight, some democratic processes, and a representative from every country, you know, that in overall control of it. But decisions like that need to be left to technicians, which is what the IOC is doing now. They're allowing technical people, experts in the sport, field level uh, 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 people, employees, um, are making the judgment calls now. And that sort of thing is really where, um, I mean, how can you have the FIFA executive committee deciding whether or not to use goal line technology? Yeah. What is that in their hands for? They're a bunch of stupid old men who are, you know, so busy stealing <laughs> money that they probably haven't even watched a game in 20 years. They don't care. Um, and, and, and between, you know, uh, along some accountability, and I think, for example, term limits would be an excellent idea. 
Um, Julio Grandona has been there for, I don't know, 40 years. Sepp Blatter has been there for 20 years. Yeah. Um, Laos has been there for 30 years. Um, uh, even just something simple as you can only serve one term, and then you have to go away. You don't get to build an empire. You don't get to, you know, be Jack Warner in over 30 years. You know Jack Warner was a school teacher? Yeah. I He's a retired school teacher, and he has a fortune estimated at $100 million. Now, how did that happen? Hmm. <laughs> how did you know yeah. well it happened because he, he got he, he got yeah. high up in fifa and he figured out how to make money doing it oh. um that's I, the kind of thing that, ha that that really has to change in fifa yeah yeah so this is basically about uh as you said it's it's uh it's about accountability but it's also about and we we see this in in american politics too so this isn't anything new but term limits in some ways, uh, and I don't want to draw a direct parallel because they're very different situations, but in some ways there are similarities. And it would not allow somebody like Jack Warner to accrue so much power that everybody yeah. else in the Caribbean basically has to suckle at his teat if they want to get anywhere. I'm sorry if I put that in a... Uh, you know, a vulgar way. Now, again, and I, want to, I want to say this. And I want to make this point, and and and... I've been guilty of it as anybody else. We all tend to uh, lump the whole Caribbean into one big pile mm. of, you know, greedy, money-grubbing. And they are poor, and, and uh, $40,000, as somebody pointed out, $40,000, which is what they were passing out in, in Port of Spain that day, yep. is several years' salary to some of these guys. Yep. Um, at the same time, the guys from the Bahamas, Fred Lund, the guy, the vice president who was right there, is the manager of some kind of a tourist attraction, stingray, come, you know, <laughs> Sea World kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, uh, he doesn't have any money. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But what he had was some integrity. Yeah. And and you know there are people down there with integrity. And the problem with, can with with the CFU and with CONCACAF has always been that when any of them showed up, Jack Warner shoved them out. Mm -hmm. um, Jamaica tried to tried to throw out Horace Burrell once. Mm -hmm. um, uh, all these countries, Antigua tried to throw out uh, Patrick John once. Um, at, at which point, Jack Warner suspends your company, suspends your federation, refuses to allow you to participate, cuts off your money. Right. Um, and they give up and they give in. Yeah. What they need is the United States, and there's nobody else who can do it. And I'm sorry if it offends some people <laughs> that you know we're the big brothers, and I don't, I'm not comfortable with it. I was just going to say, but the that, fact yeah. of the matter is, we're the only people who can say we got you covered. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if Jack Warner cuts off that hundred thousand dollars you're supposed to get, we got you covered. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. And I think that's a role that we can play, and I think it may be a role that we are playing. And 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 this is going to be interesting in the in the in the coming weeks. Um, supposedly, this whole thing, supposedly the ethics committee will have a report within 30 days, um, and and they have the power. The committee itself has the power to chuck um, Jack Warner overboard, and I, I I really think that they will. Pirates of the Caribbean. At which point, it's a whole yeah. new game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had a funny vision of uh, of him walk, <laughs> walking the plank. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to. I'd like to suspend the man from his neck somewhere. I don't know. Run by and beat on him. What a disgusting old yeah. fuck he is. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> it would be great if we could clean up all this crap. But all right, Bill, we're playing out of you know time time that that. It just restrains the amount of things we can possibly. Well, no, I I I I, I appreciate you. I, I I like your show. I love your show. I listen to it uh, constantly. And uh, someday when you bring back the dog, I will be even happier. <laughs> but in the meantime, uh, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, you guys do a, a terrific job, and uh, and we'll see where this whole thing goes.